Blog Talk Radio. Hello, everyone. This is Chris, and I'd like to welcome you to a conversation about your Kundalini Awakening experience. Um, uh, as in many of our conversations, uh, I would first like to welcome Amelia Centara, my co-host, to the program. Hello, Amelia. Hello, Chris, and hello, listeners. I'd also like to welcome Rosemary Goliath as as my uh, student here at the ashram. Hello, Rosemary. Hello, Krista, and hello, our listeners as well. Welcome. Okay, so evidently uh, we're having some more technical difficulties, as is usual with our show. Uh, uh, Amelia uh, cannot see the chat room, so whoever's in the chat room, uh, welcome and thank you for joining us. Uh, we won't be able to see what you're writing. Uh, uh, there's a battery problem with one of the computers, and so evidently this battery problem uh, keeps the person from being able to use the computer. I'm not quite sure how that works. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, yeah, so... so uh, 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 you know, apologies to those in the chat room. Um, I think that maybe uh, we need to do, you know, systems checks before uh, before we, uh, you know, a few a few minutes before the show. Uh, that didn't happen this time. So apologies. Also, also I know that this program here did not get advertised as as far in advance as as I would certainly like it to be done, and so I apologize for that as well. Today's program, well, first of all, I guess Amelia's got some announcements she would like to make. Amelia. Hello, Chris, and an apologies to everybody in the chat room. That is my fault. Mea culpa. It's got to do with my battery here. I have my PC charging up, except it's not responding. So is it possible that during the show it might come online? And if it does, I'll let you know. But please remember that you can also ring into the studio if you are in the chat room, and the number is 347-934-0026. So if you're in the chat room and you want to you know, speak with, you can get through to me, and I will patch you through to the studio in that way. And again, sincere apologies for that. Um, I would like to tell you about the, the seminars that we're holding, and now with only less than three weeks to go. I won't be making this announcement for much longer in the, in the upcoming shows. So um, let me tell you that the one in New York is happening on the 22nd and the 23rd of March. And there is one place still available for that. So that's why I'm announcing it um, here now. If somebody is listening and they have been considering, you know, whether they might come or not come, there is still one place available. So you can contact me on kundalini matters at gmail.com and we can have a conversation about how you can get there and where the venue is and all of that. So that's kundalini matters at gmail.com. The following weekend on March the 29th and 30th, the seminar is taking place in Ireland. This is a European seminar. And we have people from the UK. We have a lady coming from Brazil, a few people coming from the United Kingdom, and somebody coming from Hungary. And I'm very much looking forward to meeting those participants. And so, again, if you're listening from Europe, from any part of Europe, it's quite easy to get to Dublin um, through Ryanair or through one of the other airlines, and you will be picked up from Dublin Airport and brought to the venue, which is only a half an hour away. And that venue is in the beautiful Boyne Valley in um, the Newgrange area, and we spoke about that last week. And I'm very much looking forward to being there with Chrism and with the participants for this two-day seminar. It's a residential seminar. So again, contact me on kundalini matters at gmail.com if you have an interest in this or if you have any questions or you would like to talk to me about any difficulty you might have with attending or anything at all that you would like to ask me, please do get in contact. That's kundalini matters at gmail.com. And I would also like to, at this stage, just tell you about where you can go if you would like to make a donation um, towards the work that Chrism does. 
Um, the address is Ascension, uh, what's that word, dash, dash or hyphen, no dash, kundalini.blogspot.com. And on the top right hand side, you will see a donate button and all donations are gratefully received and much appreciated. Um, thank you very much. And that's it, Chris, and back to you. Thank you. Thank you, Amelia. And thank you, uh, everyone, for joining the show uh, the, uh, today. It is 3.05 p.m. on the west coast of the United States, uh, uh, California, Northern California. And uh, it's kind of a cloudy day outside. We've been getting some rain, which which uh, my Kundalini kind of let me know was coming, which is fine. I mean, you know, I was able to get the things covered up. Uh, and I say that just to let you know that your Kundalini also will give you information about mundane things, mundane things that may be important to you. Uh, so, so for me, you know, I, I have, a, as some of you who have come out here to the ashram know, I have a, a 1963 Ford F100 pickup. And it's, you know, it's probably had better days. <laughs> it's a lot of rust. <laughs> but I do like to cover it up when it rains. And so, of course, you know, before it's raining, the Kundalini can inform a person whether or not it is going to rain. And and you'll, for me, at least, it comes on as a feeling, a uh, almost a tactile feeling. I feel it in my chest and, and uh, radiating throughout the body. So I just want you to know that your Kundalini isn't always this, huge metaphysical idea or ideology it's a real tactile physical thing too and it will communicate to you now granted it may not always communicate with you in words uh or or you know calling out your name in an empty room or you know popping a book out of the library that it wants you to read it, you know i mean sure it'll do that sometimes but also and i would have to say for the most part it will communicate through feelings. It will communicate through uh, ideas. It will communicate through dreams. It will communicate through seeming coincidence. Okay? So, you know, that is something that I would like you to understand at this point. And the scenario with, with the Kundalini is that it gives off radiance. It is an energetic consciousness. This consciousness has radiance. That is the divine component of Kundalini. It has this amazing divine radiance. This radiance permeates everything on this world. Okay, and and if you look at some of what the physicists, you know, are, are I'm I'm trying uh, not to sound uh, well. Anyway, if you look at what, what some of our physicists considered current facts about the makeup of the universe. Uh, you know, even in their in their in their current uh, uh, fixations on on quarks and black holes and nanos and whatever other interesting names they they can come up with, uh, even they are are understanding the idea that everything is energy. Everything, and, and even I think Einstein mentioned this as well. Everything is just different levels of energy vibrating at a different level uh, 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 of expression. So, for instance, uh, a tree will vibrate differently than that of a rock. A rock will vibrate differently than that of a cat. A cat will vibrate differently, but you know, from that of a of a of a an iceberg. An iceberg will vibrate differently than that of air, and so on and so forth. But they're all energy. They are all energy, and what I'm what I'm uh, communicating to you is that this energy will be suffused by divine radiance. It all will be affected by the divine radiance. You may not you you may not as a conscious person recognize always how that radiance is working in this world, in this physical world, and in the physical world that is emanating through your perception. But it is working, regardless of whether or not you can see it or understand it. And this is this is a, a lot of the idea of 
of living right actions and, and living a, a life that is motivated through, you know, the aspects of the safety, so forgiveness, tolerance, patience, honesty, truth, uh, diligence, okay, compassion. These types of qualities are extremely important uh, with the overriding quality of love, love, love for all God's creations. Some of my students will know when I'm driving with them in the car, you know, we'll be, we'll be uh, cracking some jokes and, and something like, uh, do you know what I mean? And they'll go, yeah. And I'll say, can you get a handle on what I'm, what I'm saying? They'll go, yeah. And I'll say, can I hear an amen? Go, amen. And then I'll say, can I hear an A-woman? And they'll go, A-woman. And then I'll say, can I hear an A-child? A child is what you'll hear back from them. And then I'll say, and all God's creation, and all God's creation is echoed. And this is really, even though we're laughing as we do it, there's a seed of seriousness in it too, because it is all God's creations that we are interacting with. And I, you know, I know some of you, you know, don't like to hear the G word, God. I kind of laugh at the G word a little bit because, you know, God spelled backwards is dog. I love dogs. <laughs> dogs are great. I like cats too. But we're not calling God tack, are we? Anyway, that's neither here nor there. Uh, so as the divine radiance permeates these other energetic fields of, of a rock or a tree or a person or a place, uh, the divine components of what you have been practicing, hopefully, uh, if you're following our program here, the, the safeties program, if you're following those safeties, then the components of those safeties will be emitted through your radiance, through your kundalini radiance. And as you practice these these qualities of, of you know forgiveness, love, and, and uh, tolerance, and honesty, and truth, and diligence, and all these other qualities, uh, this is doubled into your radiance field. And remember, I don't know if you've seen the uh, the video, uh, the radiance uh, of a kundalini awakened person is huge. It's a huge field. And uh, and I invite you to go to the YouTube channels and uh, uh, at Chrism Zero Kundalini at, on the on the YouTube network and uh, uh, go. Th- Scroll through those. There's 290 videos at the moment. And scroll through those and and see the one uh, that's called Kundalini Radiance. And uh, you'll see a picture of an asteroid hit in uh, the desert of Arizona. And that would be the typical radiance parameters of, of, a, uh, of a Kundalini awakened person from the level of radiance. So the parameter of the radiance is, is about a mile in diameter, but also it's also like a, uh, a complete circle. So it goes into the soil as well as it goes up into the air as well. It's like a circle, a big uh, omnidirectional force of radiance that's coming from the individual. Uh, no small thing, no small thing. And so, of course, you can understand why millions and millions and millions and millions of people over the millennia have been working uh, very, very hard to awaken their kundalini because for most of them, or many of them, I should say, for many of them, they want the powers that come with the kundalini awakened. They want the power. They want to be able to to have their heart's desires, their, their biggest wish fulfilled, and they feel that since kundalini uh, has uh, supernatural abilities, well then, supernaturally, this will give them what their ego so desperately wants them to have. And, you know, I that's good. Good for them. Um, and best of luck, you know, within that understanding. I, I uh, my, kundalini's never, my kundalini's never given me that understanding, ever. Uh, it was never about being able to attain the things that my ego wanted me to attain. It was really about me changing my behaviors to 
to uh, to express the qualities that I've mentioned previously in this conversation that that are uh, associated with the safety protocols, and so that was a somewhat of a disappointment for my ego because of course you know I wanted uh, the Learjet and uh, uh, you know the, uh, enough money to do anything that I wanted to do, and of course uh, that did not. Uh, factor into my kundalini awakening experience but it might with yours so i certainly don't want you to say oh no 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 you know you we're, we're all limited to chrism's uh experience and that is not true and i want to repeat you are not limited to chrism's experience but neither are you limited uh, you know in in receiving less than than chrism's experience either you have your own experience and your own dynamic, and that dynamic and that personalized experience uh, will come to you in the ways that your kundalini uh, sees sees best for you to have. Uh, so this kind of brings me to the concept of the kundalini radiance. Now, I've mentioned it in a, more than a few other programs in the past that we have done but this one i want to typically make it towards radiance because of of uh, that are being planned uh for me at this moment one of those plans is uh, i'll be going to uh croatia in the balkan uh countries and i'll be spending some time there and i'll be going into amazing levels of war zones and amazing levels of disabilities who what has occurred to them who have died extremely tortured deaths and uh, it's a real i can see it from here i can see it from this chair and it you know it's a real, it's a real act of grace that the kundalini is bringing me uh but it it's what that grace wants. And when we're compelled through the Kundalini to do certain things in it, we are, we are best, uh, it is best if we follow that, that, uh, that instruction. And so as, as, you, as not everybody who's listening to this program will be in a safe and, and uh, protected, country, government, or environment. And I just want you to know that it, it doesn't matter. The Kundalini will supersede all human arranged governmental processes, cultural processes, and sociological processes. It goes right through them and right over them and right around them and right under them. It doesn't care about the ego manifestations of government and how we conduct ourselves in a sociological sense uh, uh, with each other except for the kundalini awakening person you see that's the difference because you have the kundalini then you are being observed you are being watched you are being given instruction to you are being compelled to do certain things and to act in certain ways and it's important that you do this it's important that you you manifest enough of your integrity your surrender to the kundalini so that you can uh, bring into action the activities and behaviors that the kundalini wants you to do. And if you are in a war-torn area, and there are many more war-torn areas than there are peaceful areas in the world, well, maybe not. I mean, there's probably a lot more of the peaceful areas because that is what you can make of an area regardless of what's going on around you when a person when a person with kundalini awakened goes into a war-torn area as i'm going to be doing with uh, with uh croatia possibly uh, bosnia uh, what i do what i'm compelled to do is set up pillars of light uh, the pol the pillars of light are basically it's an energetic formation that spins, and it spins to the right, just like the first Tibetan. It's an attractant for discarnate entities that have not been able to, to understand or to figure out what has occurred to them and what, what 
they need to do in order to take their next step on their spiritual evolutionary journey. The key to the pillar of light is forgiveness. And so as the discarnate entity, or we'll just call it a ghost, as the, as the ghost of a, of, a, of a person encounters the pillar of light, uh, the first thing, they'll be compelled to come up and examine it closely, and then they'll feel, they'll feel that in order to partake of this, one must forgive, forgive what it was that killed them, forgive what they had done to, to put themselves in that position to get killed, forgive the aggressors, and forgive uh, as, as much as possible before entering into this POL, the pillar of light, once that has occurred, the pillar of light will literally, literally take them right out of this dimension into their next spiritual development. So I, 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 I will be setting up quite a few POLs in, the, uh, in uh, Croatia and Bosnia uh, and in the lots of landmines, people a lot of landmines in these areas and as much as because there's you know they're really trying to get a tourist industry going again after having it obliterated uh back in the uh, uh late 80s and early 90s uh you know they laid over a million and a half mines around the country and uh and on the islands too and and not only that they laid mines during World War II even before the whole problem with the breakup of the of yugoslavia occurred uh mines are all over the place tourists are being killed by mines people getting their legs blown off uh i'm pretty sure that's not going to happen to me or or to the people i'm traveling with but still i mean it is something to care of and 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 something that if you are going to travel in these areas or other areas that have seen such amazing levels of open warfare uh, you know, to tie into your kundalini. Pay attention to your kundalini. Okay? And pay attention to the signs that are warning you away from from minefields in the area. And they have some signs. Uh, in these ki- in these types of, of countries, because your radiance extends so far, and on a, say, a, a pullout from the freeway, or from the highway, or from the road that you're traveling on, and radiance will cover a, a fairly large, a fairly large. Area. So know that, and 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 be advised of that. Uh, let me see if I'm still working. Yeah, and be advised of that, uh, so that you know you don't have to walk and stand right next to a to a grave marker to to affect uh, a, a difference in the area. All you have to do is stand there and let your kundalini do the work. Kundalini in me is what designed the PO. Uh, I didn't go, oh, let's set up a pillar of light and, and you know, do this and that. Uh, the kundalini is what the POLs. And, and um uh, if you ever get a chance to to travel with me, I will definitely show you how to make one, and uh, and I have kind of described it a little bit right now. So so if you could take that little information and take that with you into these areas, or even in into your own area here, you know, uh, Americans like to think, oh, we've never had open warfare on our ground here, and that's not true. Uh, you know, if you, if you're coming at it from a Native American, there's been lots of open warfare. It's, it's only to the victors that uh, that uh, history is written, not not to those who who were who didn't win. So, lots of places have had this, and I have gone through the United States from coast to coast and set up uh, pillars of light, and I encourage you to do that as well. Always, the key to the pillar of light is forgiveness. If the entity can forgive, then the entity can move forward. If the entity does not want to forgive or is so angry that it's still locked into that continuum of emotional disturbance, then it will have to stay there longer. And I'm, I'm suggesting that there may be a lot of them who will need to stay there longer because of the amazing levels of, of hatred 
that had developed uh, between uh, uh, some of the uh, populations involved. I will be there, uh, and we'll be traveling literally from from the the UNESCO Lakes Plav. The other, I can't really pronounce their their words very well, Plavicha or something like that, and then on down the length of the country to Dubrovnik and then out 60 miles into the ocean to the island of Vis. And uh, there are other metaphysical and kundalini-based reasons that, that I'm going to this area that I, I, you know, I'm, I'm constrained not to mention because of the other person's process. But uh, it's very exciting to, to be able to have this opportunity to spread the kundalini radiance into these areas. And I'm, I'm very much looking forward to, to going there. And yes, uh, for some of you, you'll be wondering if I'm going to be going to uh, Matagorgia or, or, or what's it called? Mm-hmm. Matagorgia. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it's one of the Marian uh, uh, sites where the Virgin Mary has been seen. And, and as some of you may know, when I ever, whenever I hear of the Virgin Mary, the first thing that comes to mind is the Shakti, Sacred Feminine. And, uh, you know, a, a biblical personage as a way to present itself into the uh, consciousness and and uh, emotional body of people. So we'll be going there and and uh, and praying and meditating and and uh, doing those types of things. Now, three four seven nine three four zero zero two six. The radiance of the Kundalini is not strictly a a light like you would shine from your flashlight. It has composition that is sticky. That's the best. That's the best way I, at this moment that I can describe it. Uh, when I touch a doorknob or I press an elevator button, that radiance goes right from my skin or my body or my beingness right into that button or right into that doorknob. Uh, And it's the same with the glass or utensils or steering wheel or pencils, pens, papers, clothing. I mean, you name it. The kundalini radiance sticks to everything. And you may be wondering, well, Chris, gosh, if the kundalini radiance sticks to everything, well, then how come uh, this world isn't suffused with kundalini radiance? And I'm going to say, well, it is. <laughs> the Kundalini is a direct tie-in to divinity. And what is it that created the physical realm at all, including all the stars, all the planets, all the quasars, all the quarks, as the scientists like, and, and of course, our own beautiful, wonderful Garden of Eden planet that we're on right now? How do you think that was created? Through a big bang? Really? Does it have to be something that's like out of the end of a gun? You know, this is this is really a uh, an ideology that that is compressed into a form that uh, scientists like to they're, they're comfortable with that. Well, okay, A plus B equals C. But I'm going to tell you no. I mean, and even if it was a big bang, well, then who was making the big bang? And why? Why cannot there be a divine intelligence, a tele, a, 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 an intelligence that goes beyond the mere mortal uh, hy- hypothesis, theoretical-based of human beings? Why cannot it be into the fa- fantastic, and why would it not be in the fantastic? And for those of us that have the kundalini, we answer to those questions. For the scientists that don't, they will still cling to, to, and they will advertise, and they will teach in the schools that, uh, well, the universe is like this and this and that, and therefore anything else that says it's not may not be, uh, uh, may not be uh, correct. And I, I apologize for the phone call that I'm not going to answer, but it is the message phone in the house here. So we'll just let it continue to ring. Uh, Amelia Santara uh, has had many, many, many experiences of the and I'm going to ask her to, to come on right now. Hello, Amelia. Did you go to the bathroom? Hello. <laughs> 
criticism. There's for one thing I do have the chat room up in front of me, and the guests there know that they can type in now to you if they have a question. And we have um, Fashji and Suka and a number of other guests, Julie, in the chat room now. Um, I must tell you that your voice is not coming through very clearly into my headphones. John is okay outside in the other room because I have checked with him. So I know you were going to ask me something, but I did not hear what it was. I haven't been following the conversation very well. So, again, it's I don't know why huh. that's the way it is. And, yeah. It's it's because you're on your iPad, right? I'm on my iPad, but I am every week, Chris, and so I don't know oh, okay. what's going on this week. Yeah. Can you, so can you hear okay? Fine now, so. you're, you're hearing fine right now. Yes, I am. Okay, very good, very good. Uh, Amelia, tell me your experiences with radiance, with the Kundalini radiance. Oh, okay. The Kundalini radiance. Okay, so you're speaking of my awareness of the Kundalini. Oh, there are so many ways, Prism. Um, I'm going blank. And the first thing that came into my mind was. Um, how I have felt the Kundalini radiance go to other people. Is that what you're speaking of? That's that fine. Go ahead. Talk about okay. that. Okay. 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 Well, well it has, this has happened in a number of ways for me. Sometimes it goes to somebody and I have no idea why. I feel it rush from my body. It can lead me through my heart chakra, through my chest, or through my head, and I feel it whoosh from me and go to a particular person, and I'm aware of where it's gone. It's a feeling, and it is a connection. I have no idea why, or I just see it going, and I know that's exactly that person. Sometimes when I'm working with my... I'm very sorry. I'm this is really difficult because I can hear my voice. Yeah, yeah, I, I can hear that echo too. So, you know, I have shared that experience that, that you're talking about, and so let me go ahead and uh, explain it. If, if my voice is coming through, can someone in the chat room tell us if the if the sound, you know, our, our perennial sound issues, if it's coming through cleanly in the chat group? Um, and for those of you listening on the archives, apologies for the sound qualities. Uh, it's it's always been a challenge with Blog Talk Radio here. But I still well, like the format. Well, is tight and clean, and he says your voice is perfect. Perfect. So <laughs> Hardly. I am hoping <laughs> sometimes, prison, I don't hear you very well, but it comes across fine. What? And, and, <laughs> Just kidding, kidding, kidding. <laughs> And obviously and nobody is hearing the echo except you and I, I think. Yeah, okay. Uh, and I'd like to say a, a quick hello to, to your wonderful husband, John. John, hello, and thank you for being on the computer and listening. May, may only as much kundalini as you're comfortable having come through this program to you, my friend. Okay, so continuing along the lines of what Amelia was talking about, and I've also had this symptom as well, the kundalini will pull itself right through your heart or your head or your hands. Uh, and, it, and not only will it pull you towards a certain spot or a certain destination, uh, it will pull you there with, I mean, you, you won't have, you'll feel anxiety if you don't follow the instruction. And and I've mentioned uh, the, the various places. For me, most of the time, it's the hospital. I'll get pulled to a uh, to a hospital in our area, and I and I'll know this enough times now. I'll know to go to the meditation room or the chapel. You know this, what, you know whatever kind of a hospital it is. Um, you know if it's the Sisters of Orange or whatever they're called, then of course they'll have a chapel. If it's uh, Kaiser Permanente or somebody like that, then they'll have a meditation room. So I'll, I'll head to those areas and uh, and I'll start giving to the entire hospital. And remember what I mentioned about a Kundalini radiance. Your Kundalini radiance being just shy of a mile 
will encompass the entire hospital, not just the patients who definitely need it, but the janitors, the security people, the doctors, the administrators, the cafeteria workers, uh, the psychologists, everybody who is in the hospital, the visitors, the family, who is in the hospital will get this radiance. And the radiance, because it's intelligent, it will go into those individuals, all, you know, however many thousands of them there are, which, you know, that sometimes are in a hospital. Um, and it will see to their individual needs. This is the power of divinity. This is the power of knowing what a person's needs are exactly as they are needed to have it, including their karma, including uh, their level of of, uh, meeting that karma in this life, including their physical levels, which includes their health, uh, including the psychological levels, which includes their phys- their emotional body, uh, you know, and and you know, including the people that are having perhaps a uh, a uh, a level of effect upon their health of any of these systems uh, from outside, from people who aren't even in the hospital. Because if you could, you look at a, at a at a person and and a person standing there, you can imagine lines going out to their kids. Lines of connectivity going out to their friends and their family. Lines of connectivity going out to the people they work with. Uh, lines of connectivity going out to abs- abs- absolute strangers. And then lines of connectivity going out into the environment, and into the animals, and into the, the food that they consume. And so on and so forth. I mean, so one person has an amazing level of, of connection uh, that the Kundalini can go into and can read, you know, like you and I would read a book. The Kundalini goes in and reads the karma, reads the body maintenance, reads reads the person's uh, quality of choices, reads the level of karma that's being developed in this lifetime, and initiates protocols that will help along their spiritual journey. Uh, journey is important only as much as as the spiritual journey is being supported through the physical systems. So let me say that again. The physical uh, systems are important only so much as they support the spiritual evolutionary systems that are working through them. I hope, I hope you can understand what I mean. If you don't, give me a call at 347-934-0026. and 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 our beautiful, wonderful, kind and considerate host uh, Amelia Santara will answer your phone call. Uh, so, the real deal of being in a body on this planet is the spiritual journey. It is not the physical journey. The physical journey serves the spiritual journey. When you come into the Kundalini, you begin to understand this in a far more dedicated and tactile format. Uh, really, I mean, it's tactile after that. I mean, imagine imagine having a prayer uh, felt upon your body uh, to the point where it's lifting your body off of the ground or off of the bed. I mean, it's real stuff. It, 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 none of this stuff is make-believe, except for those who don't have the Kundalini Awakened. I mean, that's what they'll... You know, that's typically, you know, where they go with it. Oh, that can't be real because it's not happening to me. Let's see. So anyway, it is the spiritual journey that takes the focus for even having an experience on this planet Earth in a body, in a flesh body, but also outside of a flesh body. You know, your work isn't done when you die. When you die, your your, your spiritual journey continues. It's not... You know, it's not all of a sudden you just like relax. <laughs> you might come into it in a more relaxed fashion because, you know, hunger isn't there, you know, thirst isn't there, sleep doesn't happen, unless those things are, are, are still present within the new reality that you find yourself in. Not everybody goes into the same reality upon death. And so, you know, we we kind of follow the ancient of our thoughts and activities on this world, and that us into a corresponding 
level of experience in the afterlife. Okay, so just an FYI with that. Uh, with the Kundalini radiance, as it reaches out to everybody in the hospital, as I was speaking earlier, uh, it will have positive effect. You may not always know who it is you're helping. It's just the ego that wants to know. As I walk through uh, uh, Croatia and these areas of of amazing uh, torture and death, uh, I'm not looking at specific individuals at all. I'm looking at the land. I'm looking at those who live on and off of the land. And I'm looking at the nature. I'm looking at, you know, the deer are setting off the landmines. The bears are setting off the landmines. The badgers and the coyotes and, you know, the innocent fellow mortals are also victims of humanity's darkest and hurtful expressions. And so I look into that. I look at the trees. I look at the plants. I look at the insects and the animals, fish and the birds, everything. But also the humans that have caused the problem. And I surrender to the divinity within me and allow that divinity to shine its light through me by taking a step back and letting that be. And as I walk through these areas, as I've walked through other areas uh, of of war-torn areas, there's a level of grace that takes you over. Um, The radiance can be so, so very strong, as as I just uh, discussed about, say, pulling you into a hospital or something like that. I mean, literally, it will pull you into a certain area. And by being in that area... Yes, Lasha. Yes, you're in this area too. Uh, Lasha is my cat. She's my Kundalini cat. And she wants to be part of the conversation. So here she is. Um, So with that understanding in mind, uh, you walk with radiance now. Now I've written about this. There's a couple of articles on the uh, uh, Kundalini Awakening Systems 1.com. you walk with radiance. You walk with divine footsteps. And I really, really, really mean that. The radiance begins to affect everything around you. Uh, you even may feel the people will notice you more. The animals will notice you a lot. Okay. It is something that I will encourage all of you to do all of the time. Yes, indeed, with your family. Just remember that large and strong uh, expressions of forgiveness are very, very important when it comes to walking in radiance all the time. When you have the eyes, the radiant eyes, you begin to see things that maybe cause the disturbance, uh, you know, the imbalances, uh, the disease, the ego, the entities. I mean, you name it. It's a really big aquarium. And you will you may begin to perceive what it is that is causing the problem. Uh, but you'll also see why, why that problem is being allowed to exist at all. And that's, that's a big chunk of information. And it, it can be it can be too complex for the for the for the conscious mind to to get into and then as you know the ego will want to get in there and that can kind of ruin your your walking in radiance meditation um when you're walking in these areas i will suggest that you put your hands in the kubera mudra which is the index finger the middle finger and the thumb tips together with the ring fingertip and the baby or the pinky fingertip uh, buried into the center of the palm. Okay. And for those of you that do this right now, you will feel the energetic shift. It is a very strong energetic shift. And I want you to, to use that mudra. I have used those mudras or that Kubera mudra before in the past in fairly desperate zones of population. And it, you know, it works really well. It definitely accentuates the level of radiance that you're giving into an area. Uh, 
If you have any questions about this or any comments about this, uh, feel free to call. Area code 347-934-0026. And I'm going to ask uh, Rosemary Goliath, who is once again joining us in this conversation. Hello, Rosemary. Hi there. Rosemary, have you had experiences of radiance outside of the the restaurant experience that we talked about this last uh, one or two uh, conversations. Have you had any experiences with the radiance at the level of Kundalini that you're experiencing at this time? When you said in the beginning, Christian, about the radiance and feelings and ideas and dreams and seeming coincidences are names, my strongest experience of this is when I wake in the morning that over and over again, I have amazing clarity about something that was a concern that I had or just wasn't making any sense frequently and, and that Im- impacts my action, uh, gives me guidance, and, and uh, I'm, I'm aware that that's beyond my usual thinking. That's, that's one. The other, some other times I've been in grocery stores just waiting my turn and and not consciously thinking of kundalini. I've had children, uh, small babies, uh, particularly in uh, being held, and just um, look strongly at me and um, responding that way and telling me it's like, almost like a mirror reflecting um, what's, what's going on there between us. Well, yeah, now, now as... as Many of us are parents, and, and a little bit everybody uh, with a very uh, innocent and sometimes a very knowing gaze. Uh, with the Kundalini, it's not just the infants that are doing this. Uh, uh, full-on adults are looking at you in a way that 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 you can see that they're they're very interested in you, but they don't know why. And you can see that there's a bit of a conflict in there because it kind of goes against our social awareness to stare at people as they're standing next to you in line at the crossing, a, 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 you know, a, a crosswalk. Uh, uh, yeah, that is really a, a, a response to Rosemary. So, yeah, well done. Uh, and this is now we're talking about Kundalini Radiant. Uh, Kundalini awakened radiance. I don't want you to confuse this with Reiki or Qigong or Taekwondo or or Tai Chi or uh, you know a martial art. You know this is not any of those things. This is the awakened Kundalini. Some of those things can serve to awaken the Kundalini. Yes, of course, but they're just mere tools to pry the lid off of the kundalini container Uh, they are not what is in the container just the tools that help you to access the container okay so i hope i hope that's clear if it isn't call 347-934-0026 amelia centara can you tell me if your the clarity of your sound is coming back yet the clarity of my sound is good chrism John tells me, though, and I'm going to ask him now. John, can you hear me? Oh, he hasn't <laughs> responded. The last time he could hear my voice echoing as well, so yes. unfortunately. And all the heavy breathing, too. I didn't want to mention that, but, you know, here we are. <laughs> oh, darn. <laughs> <laughs> it's fine now. He, he just tells us in, it's fine now. So so that's good. That's good. <laughs> I just, I'm, not even gonna ask, I'm not even going to ask what's fine. Ask what's fine. <laughs> you couldn't hear me, Jano? Is it okay? Yeah, yeah, he says it's fine. It's fine. Well, thank so, you um, both. Well, thank you both. Okay, so there's no questions or comments in the um, in the chat room and no phone calls as of yet. But I will instruct if there are any. Can you tell if they're sleeping? Did I put them to sleep? Sometimes that occurs. You know. Well, I, yeah, they're very, you know, they're not very active, guys, in, in the chat room. Any questions there? 
No, you see, the thing is, you're probably answering their questions as they arrive. That actually happens ah. to me quite a lot when I'm listening to you, because no, really. Something occurs to me. I bet Rosemary is the same. Something occurs to me, and I go, I, and the next thing you just answer it. And I think that happens. Fashti is typing, so let's see if he agrees. Um, that does happen, though. Uh, oh, here's yes, Josh. Uh, okay. Um, Amelia, thank you. Do you find that, Rosemary? I do, and even in, in being here with Chrisom, uh, he will address things. I'm, nothing comes to mind directly now. Probably I'd have to censor it and how much of it I wanted to share of myself and my, my uh, annoying things that I do. But um, it is. It is, a, it is a divine guidance. It's just an absolutely divine guidance, and um, that's very touching for me always, and, and to be aware of that. Well, thank you, Rosemary. It is, now, it, is, it is an affirmation, though, as well, isn't it? Not only does the information come, but it is. there are so many things that happen when that happens. You know, it's an affirmation of, of the presence of the Kundalini in my teacher, in, this, in, this, in what's happening between the communication here on, say, Blog Talk Radio, or where you're with them in the ashram, and, and the message that's received as well. You know, it's, it's wonderful. Yes, yes. Thank you. Well yeah. said. Uh, just FYI, everybody, Rosemary is not as annoying as she <laughs> makes out. Um, <laughs> I, <laughs> she's not as annoying. So, so uh, she, she's actually she's doing very well. She's only here for a short amount of time, and she's having some Kundalini phenomena, which I think is great. Uh, it just, you know, not because it's phenomena and that we're all here to be addicted to phenomena, but it's a helpful signpost that the things are occurring the way they need to occur for this person at this time. Looks like you got a question there, uh, Amelia Centara. Ah, yes, yes. So, continuing on. So, as this radiance uh, permeates these environments like in a war-torn area or a hospital or your town or your house or your, you know, in, with you and your travels, it doesn't just permeate the people. It permeates the land. It permeates the rocks and the trees and all the creations of the divine upon this world. And so in a way at first, like when you're prana feeding uh Prana feeding is, is something else uh, I'll talk about in another episode. It's a way of, of uh, eating energy that is naturally emanating through the uh, uh, through the, the force on this earth. And, and there are actually groups of people that are already prana feeding. And I'm, I'm not, you know, creating something that hasn't already been practiced. Uh, this is being this has been practiced for centuries. Um, but anyway, as you're walking in radiance, uh, the radiance will increase in you. The tactility of it will increase in you. Okay, the, the tactility of it will increase. Uh, the effect that it has on others will increase. The effect it has on you will definitely increase in and I want you to understand that sometimes as you're in traffic or you're dealing with the kids or, you know, the different, uh, the different things, uh, it can be difficult to, to keep your mind centered on the, the radiance. But the more you do it, the more unconscious it, it begins. And, and you begin to acclimate to the increased phenomena that occurs when you're walking with radiance. Are you waiting for me to stop there, Amelia? Uh, just to pause for a moment. <laughs> uh, you have a caller, and the caller is Fashti. Fashti! Master Hello, Fashti. Well, look at how you've got that radio voice, I tell you. Let me see if I can do it. <laughs> Master C. This is Fashti. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you should be doing uh, this. Thank you. I um, I wanted to thank you for uh, the Kubera Mudra that you mentioned. Um, oh, I'll tell you why, and I'll try to to uh, make it short. Um, 
we recently had some very good friends who lost uh, their son last night uh, in a tragic uh, accident. He was working and uh, working on a large machine that suddenly sucked him in, and uh, that was the end of his uh, mortal existence. Okay. And we are going over to just uh, bring um, love and, 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 and support uh, in a few moments here, so I won't hear the end of your conversation, but I will listen to it in the archives. But I, I wanted to thank you because I will be actively using the Kabera Mutra. And I also called to uh, see if you had any other suggestions that I might uh, utilize uh, in in bringing as much light and and and, and love uh, from the divine K uh, into these people's lives during this very very devastating uh, time. It, it's already started, uh, Bashti. I felt it actually. Uh, <laughs> my head is buzzing, and I can feel my aura is expanding. Yeah, it's already started, and it's reaching out to them as we speak. Uh, okay. My sympathies to them, my, my sympathies to them, and my, my, my gratitude to you for, for being a true friend and coming to the aid of that, of that uh, family uh, who is in such deep levels of grief right now. Um, it, is, it is all about them right now, and let, let them have their grief. Yes. Let them have their grief. Help them. Uh, make food for them. Be there for them. Let them cry on your shoulder. Let them okay. cuss. Let them cuss and rail and wail against whatever mistake was made that would have allowed this to occur. It's okay. It's just them. It's it's, it's them living the experience and articulating the experience and acclimating to the experience. Now that's for the family. Yes. For the, for the young man, um, he'll be there. He'll be yes. there at the at the house. Uh, he won't know. He may not understand why what has occurred, why it occurred. Uh, fill the house with love through oh. your kundalini radiance, yes. and really, and and have your wife do it too in the way that she knows best. Okay. Fill the house with love. There's, there's not too much do with regards to healing their grief. The grief is not to be healed. It is to be expressed and experienced. Mm-hmm. Okay. And as your kundalini sat in the area, uh, the divine grace will have friends through you, uh, you know, within this very terrible experience that, that has just occurred. Yes. And I encourage you. I encourage you as soon as you hang up. Do you, you head on over to their house. That's what we're doing. Yeah, that's what we're doing. And uh, now the wife is standing over there waiting now. At the door, <laughs> tapping her foot, going, looking Absolutely. at the wife, going, "Come on." <laughs> Why Come. do you want to make a phone call now? <laughs> <laughs> my, okay. My my, 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 my blessing, much blessings and, wish- and grace to you, Master. Thank you. Okay. All right. Goodbye, Bosji. Goodbye. Oh yeah. Okay. So there, there is a good example. There's an excellent example of a person with Kundalini who is going into a very, very traumatic experience for other people, and bringing that piece of the divine into the household, into the, the the broken hearts of the parents that have lost. Um, and my heart and my kundalini reaches out to them as well through Fashji. And I would welcome any of you to do this. Um, uh, if you know people who have lost a loved one or uh, who are still in a grief that that's not allowing them to to live a life of of, of happiness and and uh, and, and emotion. Uh, to to of your 
to their equation and allow their equation to to be assisted through your kundalini. Okay. So it looks like I've lost Amelia here. <laughs> um, so there, there is that. Uh, I just want to continue along these lines. Now, if you do have a, have a question that you'd like to ask, uh, uh, you can do as Fasci just did. And uh, you can call area code 347-934-0026. Ask any question that you want you know, about your kundalini, whether or not it's on this topic that I'm talking about right now. Or it's, it's perfectly okay to go off topic with your question. So continuing with the radiance, as you become more forgiving, so does your radiance amplify that forgiveness. As you become more tolerant, so does your radiance amplify that tolerance. As you become more loving, so does your radiance amplify that love. And so on and so forth through the whole palette of human expressions of an emotional shared quality that we have in our societies. Uh, even a handshake or just a look into somebody's eyes can transmit Kundalini into that person's awareness. And so I want to encourage all of you to walk with radiance. Walk as you think Christ may have walked. Walk in the way that you would think Buddha may have walked, or Allah, or any of the great personages that we associate with divine activity. Ah, so it looks like we have a phone call here. I'm going to go and answer it myself. Hello? Hello? Ah, it's Amelia. Hello. It's, it's me, I'm back again. I don't know what that was about, and I couldn't get back on. It kept saying invalid number, but here I am. So... Back on duty, uh, well, sir. <laughs> uh, thank you. Thank you, ma'am. And, and, okay. and forgiveness for your invalid number. You're going to have to work. You're going to have to work on that, I think. <laughs> <laughs> okay. It's going to lose. So, so, so here's something that and I'm going to, I'm going to talk a little bit about you, Amelia. Um, when, uh, when we were discussing about how Amelia would begin to give a massage one of the first things I said to her was, before you even touch the person, I want you to be in a level of, of devotion, strong, strong devotion to the Kundalini. And she has done that. And for her, her radiance comes right out her fingers into the client. And uh, lately, because her radiance is becoming stronger and stronger and stronger, because she's practicing this, over and over and over. And so, in essence, she's practicing uh, consciously joining with her kundalini in order to give selfless service to another person. Uh, her radiance has been increasing to the point where I'm going to have her describe what occurred to her uh, between massages uh, at, at a recent psychic fair. Go ahead. Amelia. Oh, okay. Okay, Prism. Well, I, yes. Well, when the devotion that I give to the Kundalini, first of all, begins from the moment that I go into the room, and it also continues between clients. So when, I, uh, when a client leaves, and as I'm preparing for the next client, as I'm removing towels, and as I'm preparing the bed, I am also in devotion. And the radiance has increased because it is, now something I feel within my whole body and it is an immediate connection with my kundalini and I walk, not walk, that's the wrong word, but I am with, you know, anyway. So a client left the other day and I, there was something that had happened, anyway, okay, let me get to the point. I, I started to put the towel on the bed, new towels on the, on the massage bed for the client and I first of all noticed a little yellow spark, and then at another point of the towel, another yellow spark, and then another one, and then they began to increase. It was like little fireworks um, happening on my towel, and I looked up, and I could see them in the room, and then I looked back down again, and they were pink, 
not as many pink little sparks, but they were also appearing. So I had this beautiful, random firework display on the cows and around me, and it went on for, oh, my goodness me, I, a good five minutes nonstop. Um, and the whole time, it was just so beautiful, and it was just this gorgeous, beautiful place to be in, and I enjoyed it very much, very much. <laughs> and then how did it make you feel when you were seeing it? Oh, it, I was extremely blissful and an extreme devotion to the Kundalini. Um, it is something that happens on my skin from the inside out, on, on all of my skin. It comes from within my whole body now right out through every part of me and and it expands out and it was you know all those little firework displays that was all within us and it was just beautiful wonderful mm. wonderful now this this is a direct uh experience of phenomena that's based upon uh first of all the selfless service for another person because you aren't charging for this right no, this is I, I do um social service twice a week that I volunteer for and just before this happens maybe I'll just share that I had seen a client, I see clients for an hour and I had um a bit of, of a gap and I went into the office because Kundalini told me, communicated, go to the office and offer a short and I followed you know, it this is happening all the time with me now. I mean there isn't even a um you know, uh, it's an immediate response. I just went into the office and said that I want, you know, did somebody want to come for a short um, massage? And the lady in there said, there was three women in there, and one of them said, um, oh, no, I, I'm, I'm far too self-conscious. No, 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 I couldn't. And I cannot remember what I said to her, but I know I spoke something to her, and it came directly from the Kundalini, because the next thing... She's saying, well, okay then. And she came into the room, and that was the Kundalini. And, and I spent 10 minutes with her, and she had a wonderful experience directly from the Kundalini, who knew she was in there, who directed me to go get her and bring her in. And, and she had, in a very short time, a healing experience. And it was when she was gone and I had removed the towels and I was preparing for the next client, that was when the Kundalini, you know, when I had this um, phenomena of, of the, the beautiful firework display of yellow and pinks. And it was definitely connected to that whole experience of the devotion and everything that was going on. And the sparks, the, the sparks and the, the, the fireworks you saw were about, Oh, the spark would be about a what? A maybe a little less than an inch in diameter. Yes, quite small. Very different to orbs now because I see orbs and blues, and this is different. And these didn't have tails. Oh, yeah. Sparks. Very nice. Yeah, so very nice. not very big. Yeah, yeah. And so, yeah. and so, <laughs> uh, uh, I I would like the the audience. I'd like you you to to look at Amelia's experience. And realize that there is a lot more going on here on this world than your five senses. There is a lot more going on on this world when you have your kundalini awakened and you begin to walk in radiance as Amelia is doing. And as Rosemary is learning to do. And as Eileen is learning to do in Florida. She also has some... Uh, some uh, some stories of radiance and some stories of uh, of the Kundalini protecting her and her family. Uh, this is not isolated. These are not isolated incidences. These are real, uh, actionable experiences that are, that people are having. Uh, I'm not sure that anybody else would have been able to see Amelia's sparks because though very few people are walking in radiance. But because she is walking in radiance, the the transformation of her body and her ocular systems and her brain, the way the Kundalini has transformed her flesh and and focused it and into 
the ability to see on the physical presence, to see into levels of energy fields that are not commonly witnessed by other people. This is what we're talking about with the Kundalini. It gives you access to areas of of experience, energetic experience, but also uh, uh, um, activity-based experiences that people will not be exposed to because they're not ready to have it. And because they're not ready, ready to have it, they can't see it. It's like those the Spanish uh, ships that uh, Christopher Columbus was was sailing as he came over to the to the uh, what what they called the West Indies. Uh, a lot of the natives didn't see the ship because it was so outside of what their expectations of life were. They could not see a physical thing that was coming right at them. Now, Rosemary and I, Fort Ross and uh, Fort Ross is in Northern California. It's about an hour and a half away from here, maybe a little less. And uh, the the uh, Kashanaya Indians, I believe, it's how they're, how they're uh, pronounced. They did see the sails of the Russian uh, sailing vessels coming at them. So they saw white sails on the horizon and wondered, what the heck is that? You know, oh my gosh, it's coming towards us. So they were able to see it. So it's not the same way with all peoples or with every individual. But generally speaking, uh, if you're not in some way prone towards Kundalini, you will not see or or uh, uh, be able to participate, shall we say, in some of the visual phenomena that will come from the Kundalini radiance. But you will. You will, as Fasci's friends are already beginning to feel, you will uh, uh, be able to understand from an actionable-based experience. So uh, as, as Amelia gives you her very special KITT, uh, Kundalini-infused therapeutic touch, as, as uh, Amelia does this to you, you will feel it. You will feel it. You will feel it in many ways to your core. And, you know, and, and, and Amelia may, you know, if you ever talk with her about this, uh, you know, her clients often are crying with release or crying with the beauty of the experience. Very, 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 very strong massages and healings are given, uh, you know, through this level of interaction with a Kundalini awakened person. And so I will encourage as many of you in Europe and Ireland, Great Britain and anywhere on that side of the Atlantic, to come to the Ireland seminar. If you're not going to come to visit with me and to learn about the Kundalini, then come for the healing itself. If you've got a problem, if you've got a pain, if you've got a disease, you call Amelia Santara up. You get a hold of her at kundalinimatters at gmail.com and you talk with her. If you don't want to come for the Kundalini, that's fine. Then come for the healing that the Kundalini can bring you. And uh, uh, Amelia, uh, I want to I want to make sure that you're okay with this. <laughs> I'm back. I'm back. Of course, I'm okay with that. Of course. All right. All right. That's what I thought. Yes. yes. So, that's, so that's come for the healing. Come for the healing. If you can, if you can get on a jet, you know, get the gurney on the jet. Maybe. Maybe they'll put it in the in the hold, you know, where the baggage area is. But get on that jet and land in Dublin, and you'll get picked up, and you'll get taken up to to the uh, Newgrange area. And there, I will work on you as well. Okay, and I've done this at seminars before. We do healings at the seminars. Now I have to admit that I haven't done a healing at a seminar since. Since I gave way too much Shakti pot to that one man, and he had all those blisters on his spine, uh, that's we, you know, he definitely got a healing, and it did clear up very quickly. Uh, that's the last time I did a healing at a seminar, but I'll be glad to reintroduce uh, the healings in the seminars uh, so that you can experience that. I can't make any promises or any guarantees. Sometimes we experience illnesses in order to learn what it is to have that illness, what it is to be 
judged by others as sick, what it is to to live a life or a portion of a life that has that illness involved, and what what does it do to your levels of compassion for other people who are also suffering in these ways? So there are many things to be taught to a person by having illnesses. And so your illness may not be cleared up because you still have more to learn from it. On the other hand, your illness may just exactly be cleared up because of what you're learning from having the Kundalini and what what you will be exposed to as you come to that seminar. So I will invite any and all of you to make an effort to come to these seminars. And yeah, if you want to learn about some of these exalted applications of Kundalini, well then come. There's only so much that I can give on the, on the radio. There's only so much that I can write on the, on the Internet. Some things need to be experienced in person. And I'm making myself available to you for that. Don't let others scare you away. Don't let the strangeness of, of uh, Kundalini scare you away from being, a he- from being healed of your disease. Make the effort. It is not uh, an expensive flight from anywhere in Europe to Dublin. Ryanair, EasyJet, British Airways, French Airways, uh, what's that, German Airways, Lufthansa, they all fly into Dublin. Easy jet, maybe not so much, but I've, I've seen those orange jets there too. So definitely make the effort to come to Ireland if you can, and, and to New York. And to New York. Okay. So if you have any questions, give me a call, 347-934-0026. And Amelia Centara, uh, under the 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 gaze of her husband John will answer that phone and uh, bring bring your question oh, here. <laughs> did John like that <laughs> he's you... actually in the next room so John is listening to you and he's also playing poker <laughs> so oh I see I see you don't hey. have his full and absolute attention I have to uh, you know that is true <laughs> <laughs> Take take your iPad over to John and say hello. Okay. I'm going to do that. Now I'm walking out. Okay, John. Oh, he's not here actually. I think he ran away. John. He's on a break. Actually he's on the phone out in the other room. <laughs> okay. Just to, So to I will take... come and say hello with I will come and say hello with him in a minute when I okay. hear him come back. <laughs> all right, all right, all right, all right. So he missed all of that then. <laughs> that's okay. That's okay. So, so uh, okay. this is not something that I've done at a seminar for a long time since 2006. Uh, do a healing at a seminar, Amelia. So this will be a nice new uh, application uh, that we're coming into with that, and and I don't mind, uh, you know, reinstating that. As a, as a general rule, um, how do you feel you have changed since you began to walk in radiance? W I R. Everything has changed, Chris. I mean, my whole life has changed because everything that I do now is from that place, you know. And um, okay, God, that makes me out to be, you know, yeah. So as I'm going through <laughs> my day, it is from, I know, yeah, it sounds, you know, it's. And I know I'm perfect, no. <laughs> I oh, do, no. Oh, you know, no. I, <laughs> we discussed I do, levels I, of perfection I, before the show, didn't we? <laughs> we did. <laughs> I am, um, but everything now is done with um, a consciousness and an application, it is. So when I am going somewhere, when I am doing something, um, I'm aware constantly of the Kundalini. I'm aware of the Kundalini in me, within me, um, and of my surrender to what it is that the Kundalini asks of me and what it is that the Kundalini would want me to do in different um, situations. I'm not even all the time conscious of it now. I would have been, you know, the, 
there was a time when I was very aware of that and I was doing practices to be aware of that, things you would have had me do. And, but now it flows more and it has become integrated, I suppose, more um, all the time. Um, and I, and I well, screw up quite a bit too, yeah. But well, <laughs> let, let, me, let, me, yeah. let me go over and, and, and uh, get Rosemary's. Uh, how do you feel about uh, uh, walking in radiance, Rosemary? Well, I still consider myself an, a newcomer to that experience, but it, it is a presence. And when and Kristen says it is God's presence, I walk every morning here for about an hour, and it's um, all 9.30 to 10.30 usually about. <laughs> and, and I just I must say that since she's at the uh, ashram, I have her walk for an hour chained to a millstone grinding the, the wheat into flour, but... Here, I'll give you back to her. Yes, I enjoy walking. <laughs> and and I, I'm aware of the path that I go. I'm aware of things. Yeah, people passing by in the car. Or people are waiting for the bus. Uh, even there, there is on the path, there is a shrine of a young gal that died at 18. And I pass that every day. And there are little... They're plastic, of course, permanent little flowers and and things there from people who love her. And, and I am aware of that. I don't know what happened. But um, and it becomes a prayer for me of, of whatever else is needed in any of those relationships to offer that and the forgiveness and uh, people's needs, as I see um, walking as well. It, it's that's very different. Than, than I have done before. Yeah, yeah, very and good. Yeah. Saying, go, go ahead. Saying, go and, ahead. And, and and that sort of what I'm speaking about with, in relation to the practice, because that is something that you have been given to do, isn't it? That Chrism has asked you to do. And as like what I have found is with as I practice something like that, and I came into those experiences as you're describing, that. Ex- Stands out then into other areas of my life as well, and it incorporates that so that as I move, I, you, maybe when you're not doing the walk, when you're doing other things, you find yourself doing the same sort of thing. Would you say? Yes. More than you would have before. And well, that's even, how it is. Even asking as a as a form of a prayer, you know, just asking for inner guidance or asking. Or understanding, whatever that is. Again, that divine connection. That's just um, very powerful. Yeah, it's like it's like life becomes a prayer, doesn't it? It's like a a, a prayer in action. It's 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 things change very much. Yeah, it's it's a it's a very very beautiful way to live to live one's life. I have to say, it is something that I am. You know, it's like this cycle of gratitude and love for what it is that I find myself living now and that in turn increases what it is that I am within and it's like this beautiful wave of you know one feeds the other and it's 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 lovely it's 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 very very beautiful as are the both of you so very very beautiful in how you both individually walk within the radiance Radiance, and so, so I really want to to uh, bring this into you, the listener. I want you to feel the radiance in the voice of Rosemary and the voice of Amelia. My voice, feel the radiance coming into you. Kundalini travels on the vocal emanations of the human being that it's awakened within. And it's coming into your ear, into your tympanic membrane, and into the, the audio centers of your brain, straight into the spine, straight into the spine, and beginning to, to read where you are in your spiritual journey. And if you're listening to this, if you're listening to this conversation about Kundalini Awakening, uh, and you're listening, and you have been, say you've been listening to the other programs as well. This should tell you something about the maturity of your soul development 
and that you may be called into the kundalini if you are not already. Many of the people who listen to this broadcast have the kundalini already. You know, and they, they just may need some guidance with it or things of that nature. Some of the people who listen to this program do not have the kundalini, in, but they're researching it. They're talking about it. They want to know more information. They've heard about this great force, and they want to know more about it. Uh, if you are one of those people, well, once again, you want to look at how you even found this broadcast. What made you aware of it at all? And for you to be aware of the permeability of your energetic system to the kundalini as you listen to these words and you, 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 you feel these concepts within you, within your brain, within your body, within your experiences. Really think about this. Radiance is very powerful and it is what what causes a halo if you i'm looking at a picture of christ right now and he's got a halo around him i like that picture of him and uh that is part of the kundalini radiance it is a more densely photonic level of radiance that you would get say compared to the the outer extreme auric uh uh level of radiance that you'll have coming from the body. Uh, typically, the, uh, the corona around a person's head uh, will be of about, say, anywhere from three to six feet around. And then, then the extreme parameter uh, amplification of the kundalini radiance uh, pushes it even further. And then, of course, the life force aura Uh, will get pushed even further still. And so be aware of this. You may feel the tips of your fingers tingling, and there are chakras in those fingertips. And so when you go in Kubera with this, Kubera is a level of... You don't want to go into the direct uh, uh, meaning of the word Kubera, which is spelled K-U-B-E-R-A. Kubera was a god in the Hindu pantheon of gods that had to do with uh, the jewels of the earth and and gold and silver and all of the treasures of a material uh, uh, expression that are contained within the earth and not how Kubera Mudra is being given or the Kubera finger positions are being given. This is about being giving healings to all God's creation. And specifically giving healings to the human and life-based interactivity of the earth system here. Um, Within this very, very narrow field of of dimensional agreements where where time is flowing up past, present, future, where where people are born, uh, go to to uh, adulthood and then into uh, old age and then they pass away only to return again in a different body where they grow from infant, infancy to adulthood to old age and they die and so on and so forth. Your radiance travels with you beyond death. That light, because you have to remember, it is divinity that is making this radiance. It is nothing of a biological photonic expression at all. And so, you know, you look at these websites, like Biology of Kundalini, Janet Dixon's uh, uh, website, and I love Janet Dixon, don't get me wrong, and I told her to write that book long before she did it. And I it because she's helped a lot of people with it. But, you know, she she's kind of like narrowly focused on the biological aspect, which is, you know, which is appropriate to her title, The Biology of Kundalini. Well, Kundalini is not simply biological in my experience of it. In my experience of it, it is far beyond biology, but it includes biology. So certainly biology is not accepted from it, but included within it. Included within it. Okay. And so life forms do give off a life 
uh, a power of life radiance. Okay, this is not what I'm talking about. Although the Kundalini will consume that and and expand on that, uh, uh, push it out further, make it more powerful. Uh, biology is part of the Kundalini process. It is not the end and the beginning of the process. But don't get me wrong. I, I you know a lot of what Janet Dixon writes about there, I feel is is helpful to Kundalini people. And uh, and I think that uh, she's seeing that uh, uh, these days as her as her income increases due to people enjoying her book, and blessings to her and blessings to the people who read her book. Uh, my understanding and experience of Kundalini goes far beyond the physical systems, far beyond them, and it goes into dimensional systems and cosmological systems. And and in this conversation, the reach of radiance is. It's both physical and non-physical, just like the Kundalini, really. The divine radiance uh, reaches in to the physical and balances or helps the person to balance their equation, but it also reaches into every other life form that we know of and those that we do not know of as yet. And yes, there are life forms on this world that we do not yet know about from a Western scientific perspective, okay? Um, the radiance reaches into them as well. The radiance reaches into the discarnate communities. Discarnate meaning uh, consciousness without a body. Radiance reaches right into them, and it attracts them. As a matter of fact, a person who walks in radiance has a huge, kind of like an audience, uh, discarnate entities that are observing what is occurring. Not necessarily interfering, but observing what is occurring. Because even within the lower astral realms, divinity is in charge. Divinity is the, the c- controlling structure within, within the lower astral or spiritual areas. Something for you to understand. Um, so, yeah, uh, radiance follows you into death, and it will follow you into your next incarnation. Okay? The effect of the radiance will follow. Now, the, the, the child may or may not be born with a dramatic kundalini-induced radiance because that may not be beneficial for the child's development at that time, but it will come later on in their life. It will revisit them, as it did me. And as it will, Amelia, and as it will, Rosemary, and as it will, Fashji and Eileen and anybody else that the Kundalini has been activated within. And so I get the question, I got this question recently. Well, Chris, when is it done? When is it finished? And typically I'm going to say to you, it is not ever finished while you still have this body. The radiance of the Kundalini will continuously work to evolve you spiritually evolve you uh even after death and even into the next life if there is to be a next life for you so know that and understand that and don't well i should say really look at levels of parameters and restrictions that your your ego or your scientific based mind and understandings will try to to have you affixed to the kundalini, there are no restrictions to the kundalini. There are no restrictions that a human mind can attach to it that will affect it in a way that, say, a human ego wants to have effect on it. I don't care how much yoga you do. I don't care how much qigong you do or how much you meditate or what color your robes are. It's the kundalini that's in charge. And it will dress you up any way it wants. doesn't matter if your God is Krishna, Christ, science, money. doesn't matter what your God is. The Kalini will surpass and, and usurp uh, that false divinity with its true divinity. The true divine soul is, is in the Kundalini awakening of a human being. 
That is as close to the divine as we will get within a corporeal body. And so I want you to really walk with that radiance. Spread that radiance. You know, shake a person's hand and, and, and leave some of that grace and blessing on their skin too. And, de- and detach and separate yourself from any ego-based manipulation or design or control or application. Your ego has no business and your kundalini will not allow it anyway. Okay. So keep yourself egoically clean when you walk in radiance. That is part of walking in the radiance. It's, you're not walking with ego. You you don't have your, you know your. Uh, <laughs> what's that? I, I better not say. It. You don't have your uh, your sociological based, uh, current contemporary based expression walking with you when you're walking in radiance. And if you do, it's only as much as is needed for you to be able to be seen in 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 the social environment in a way that doesn't scare the heck out of everybody around you. If they saw light around you, a lot of them would just run for the hills. Okay. And so, yeah, it's important for you to know that it's important. It's important for you not to think that everybody is going to respond to Kundalini radiance in a positive way, because it's just not so people are easily frightened. Look at the stock market, you know, I mean, you know, that's a good indicator of how how people can be so afraid. So know that when you walk with radiance and don't go, oh, yes, honey, I'm going to go out and walk with radiance unless your honey understands that that's indeed what you're doing, such as Amelia's John. John, uh, if I may be so bold to, to speak of his holiness in such a way, John is very supportive of his wife's kundalini. He understands. He gets it. He even gets it to the point of having his own kriyas, even though the kundalini is 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 not. He somebody has to be the nurturer in the in, in the relationship, and John is supporting his family in more ways than he understands. No offense, John. I, you're a very smart man. I understand that, but you know the kundalini. The kundalini is 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 the intellect, uh, and you're doing very well. You're doing very well. You're supporting your family to have the kundalini present uh, in the life right now. And I want to just tip my hat to you and 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 give you gratitude for that, and also give you gratitude for and yourself uh, making this this broadcast possible. So thank you to John and Amelia in the kingdom of Kerry. Uh, in in, uh, in Ireland, uh, and I would like to thank Glenn Ola uh, for the web maintenance and web design of the Kundalini Awakening Systems One dot com. Eileen Laurel, who you can reach at at uh, Kundalini Living at Gmail dot com uh, for for all of, of what she has done in the past and is doing right now to support uh, the teachings and the and the uh, the spreading of the Kundalini in Florida. I would like to thank everybody who is currently coming to the seminars and those who will be coming in the future. I would like to thank those who are listening in the archives and for those who are listening right now live uh, to this program. Walking in Kundalini radiance is far more than I can put into a two-hour program. Just try it. Say to yourself, Kundalini in me, walk with your radiance expressing through me. Just that much. Kundalini in me, walk with the expression of your radiance through me. And begin to feel the difference that makes. That's actually giving permission to the Kundalini to come forward through you. So make sure, uh, you know, that 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 uh, that you're ready in your life to have this this grace come upon you and within you and express itself through you into the outside and the inner and outside environments it's an amazing gift and it turns you 
into an amazing gift of grace to this world and to the population and all God's creations. Thank you for listening.